Okay, Trish, there you are. Hello, I'm, li I'm live, as you said. You I finally live. made it, I'm live. Let me live get my camera alive. where I want it to be. Ready Hi, good morning. I am so excited to have you here. How's your day been going so far? Fantastic, I'm very excited to be here. You were so great this morning. I got some golden nuggets just from this first 30 minutes. Imagine what this entire day is gonna be like. I know, it's gonna be so good. Everybody wants to make sure they stay with us today, really stay with us today because not only are you gonna get the amazing golden nuggets, I'm sure you've gotten 10 golden nuggets already just in this first 30 minutes, but you'll get great golden nuggets. The other thing we wanna make sure that we give you are step-by-step -step instructions on how to get where you wanna go. So I'm really excited to be here Me today. Too. And you've got such a great topic and one that is, you know, we had people saying on here that they wanted to find how to get more quality leads. Yeah. Your topic is going to absolutely tell them what to do. And it is the way that I started my business and built my business as well. It's expanding your reach and turning your mouth into money by speaking to groups. I think so often we, we look around and we're like, okay, there's people everywhere. I don't know how to gather them. Guess what? Somebody's already gathered them into a group and you could go and talk to them and close a bunch of people. So Trish, I'm gonna give your bio here and introduce you and then we're gonna just jump in and start talking, giving them some good tips. All right, go for it. Okay, so Trish Carr is the results revolutionary. She works with sales teams, business owners, and individuals who want to achieve revolutionary results right now not tomorrow not next week but like i want results now she's an acclaimed sales expert she's got over three decades of experience and she's got an innovative approach that combines sales strategies with the latest behavioral sciences that creates a really simple formula to help you get fast past some of those pitfalls that we have with sale, with selling. She's the number one author of the bestseller, It's Just a Conversation, What to Say and How to Say It in Business. And I love that because do we not overcomplicate sometimes? And like yes. we go in our heads, it's just a conversation. <laughs> I was just saying that with one of my clients yesterday as she was really stressing over her sales script. And I was like, listen, it's just, you're just having a conversation with them. And she was like, but it just sounds like a sales call. I'm like, babe, it is a sales call. <laughs> like, We don't need to hide that. It's a sales call. Like, let's just have a conversation with them, see who's interested, see who's not, um, and, and just go for it. So I love that. And I'm excited to hear more about the book as well. Yeah. Um, Trish is also the co-founder of the Women's Prosperity Network. Raise your hand or just give us a shout out if you're already a part of the Women's Prosperity Network. It's a yeah. fantastic group. Um, every, it, every, is it Monday? It's Mondays, right? Every Monday they have a, a new call and a new trainer that comes on and just giving you great information to help you prosper and grow as an entrepreneur. So they offer online and offline business building and skills building tools, motivation, inspiration, and a comprehensive coaching program. So if you're a part of that, oh, look, we got some people in here. Yep, tons, of people. tons of people. Tons of members. Okay. Tons of our amazing not, sisters are here. Yeah. And if you're not, you should be feeling left out right now. You should be. So go check it out. Okay. Yeah, womensprosperitynetwork.com. Check it out. It's an amazing community. Yes. Awesome. Well, we're so excited to have you. Welcome. Thanks for being here and giving your time. Gosh, it's an honor. I'm so happy that we could be here. And you were just saying, you know, it is actually every Wednesday. It's wow, Wednesday. And I remember, was it about a year ago that you were on the show? I think so. It might even have been you know, longer it's ago. Longer, because I was thinking mm -hmm. back to that too. We reconnected at uh, the E Women this summer, but I had been on the show when I first moved to Georgia, which was five years ago. So no it's way. been four and a half years since I was on. It's been a while. No way. Well, we'll have to have you back again for sure. I would love to. Yeah, okay. So we're talking about um, how to get more speaking gigs, but you know, I think a lot of people, they don't see themselves necessarily as the person who could command the stage or as somebody who really wants to speak. And so I'd love to just start out by hearing a little bit about your story. How did you get started? Because, yeah, this is another thing. We're not natural born professional speakers. We have to develop, yeah. we all have a journey. Yeah, you know, it's, um, when I think back on it, I look back and I can't believe where I am today. You know, in fact, I meet people from my past. So my background is in corporate. I used to work in the telecommunications industry, AT&T in, in particular, as an employee for 16 years. 
And then from there, I worked in the um, telecommunications industry going into, at the turn of the century, if you will, going into internet and all the next level of the information age. And the first time I spoke, I can remember it like it was yesterday. And I'm not talking about like when you talk in high school or you have to get up in college and you get really nervous. This was so ridiculous. I was in um, the customer service and sales call center. Mm -hmm. So there's like a hundred people in this call center, all at their desks. If you've ever seen the movie, The Wolf of Wall Street and the big boiler rooms that they had, it was kind of like that. And every Monday morning, we would have a meeting, kind of a sales environment, right? So rah, rah, every Monday morning, hey, get everybody up. In that sales meeting, we would also do some administrative stuff. So that particular Monday morning, it was my job, this greenhorn who was scared to stand in front of these hundred peers, people I knew. I was so scared. But all I had to do was five minutes on what are we doing with the company picnic? What are we going to eat? Are we playing games? Can I bring my family? All that stuff. So the night before, I was so nervous. You would have thought I was going to the firing squad. I mean, really, <laughs> I remember, I, first of all, I have very fair skin. I'm Irish. So when I get nervous, my whole face gets really, really red. Not just my face, but this whole part of me right here. Uh -huh. I know some of you can relate to that. The so it's been that you can see it start to rise as you right. get more it comes all the way up. Exactly. So the night before, I'm thinking about what am I going to say in my five minutes? And even in that time frame, I was so scared. I could feel my voice shaking. I was really nervous. So anyway, I practiced. But the next morning, there I was standing. Everybody's standing around their desks at these things, right? Everybody's just standing around listening to whoever's talking up there. And let me tell you, I don't know about you, but standing in front of my peers oftentimes is more daunting than standing in front of people I don't know. And I still feel that way to this day because I know what they're saying. I'm one of them over there. And let me tell you, I was 20, 21, right? We're all young. And what do we do? We tear down the speaker. Oh, look at those shoes. How could she be wearing those shoes? Or who does she think she is talking to us? And all of this time they're doing that and I'm next. And my heart is starting to pound. I look like Pepe Le Pew, you know, in the cartoon <laughs> where the heart's going out. So I'm a nervous wreck. But anyway, Trish is gonna come up now and share about the picnic. So I get up there. Somehow my knees brought me to the front of the room. I don't know how. I did my five minutes. When I walked off the front of the room, people were going, great, Trish. Thanks, Trish. That was great, Trish. Thank you so much. And I'm like, did I speak? What did I say? I have no idea. It's sort of like, you know, when you're driving home sometimes and you get in your driveway and you go, how did I get here? Right. Like, it's all gone. Like it's wiped from your memory. It's just gone. So that's auto. You go on autopilot, right? Mm -hmm. So somehow, some way I got through it. And at the end of it, I, in that moment, I said to myself, you're getting better at this. This is not going to be your future. Because I knew in order for me to move up in the corporate world, which is my goal, I didn't want to stay in the sales center answering call after call after call and having absolutely no freedom. Mm -hmm. I knew that I had to get better at speaking. So I made it my work. And I looked for mentors who could help me. I was so lucky to be in an environment of really supportive women in particular mm -hmm. who supported me on my journey. I looked for opportunities to speak. That was key. Actually, like standing up and doing it, even though my heart was coming out of my chest. And I connected with, um, we every year they did a... Um, payroll deduction for United Way. You know, you're all familiar with the United Way. It's a charity. And we would go from group to group to group to get the employees to open up their pocketbooks and give United Way money. Talk about a tough room. Right. Right? <laughs> but it was the best training ground. And I just learned how to do it. And then fast forward 10 years after that first five minutes. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting in my office and now I'm in, I'm promoted to the headquarters of at and I had moved up the ladder and this time my phone is ringing and it's my vice president and I'm in Atlanta and she calls me and she says, you know, 
tomorrow morning I'm supposed to meet with the president of Florida at AT AT&T, which is like God at the phone Mm -hmm. company. And I'm going to get him to okay and green light our multi-million dollar project. So we were bringing brand new computers. This is when we were going from DOS to Windows and all of that stuff. So it was in the late 90s. And she said, I can't go. Can you go for me? I said, yeah, I can go. Are you kidding? I'm thrilled. Like, I'm going to get an opportunity to speak in front of the president of Florida. So she said, great. This was 930 in the morning. She said, your flight is at 530 today. Can you be on it? I was like, of course. And this was before TSA. So it was really easy. I had the rolly bag ready to go. I knew I could get through, you know, security, all that stuff. So I go on the plane, I make some notes about the project, what it is I want to share with him, how I want to influence him to say yes, because that's what it was about. Sign off on this huge project. So I'm all ready to go. He comes into the room and I, I had forgotten this about him. So not only am I speaking to the president of Florida, and when Florida says yes, all of the other states in AT&T say yes. So this was a big deal. So not only am I speaking to him as the president of Florida, in he walks and he looks like a 35 year old Brad Pitt. So not only do I have the distraction of the president, now I have the distraction of Brad Pitt, (laughs) right? So he came in with his staff, long story short, went through the presentation. At the end of the presentation, he says, okay, Trish, he says, I'm gonna green light the project, but I have one condition. And I'm like, okay, what's that condition? He said, that condition is that every quarter you personally be in touch with me and give me an update on the project. Wow. Wow. So can you imagine what that did for my career? It moved me up very quickly. I was able to, uh, within four years, be offered a beautiful golden parachute to leave, which was awesome. And it was then that I became an entrepreneur, and I took the gifts and talents that I developed as a training manager, as a salesperson, as a customer service expert, and as a speaker out into the world so that I could show other people how to do the same thing so that they could have the same freedom and joy that I have in my life. So that's kind of how I got started with the speaking. And you got to hang out with Brad Pitt, so it was a win. I know. (laughs) Yes. All things Yeah. Yeah, he looked like Brad Pitt. It's great. A couple things that I want to pull out of this is for all of you that are listening that have felt that fear and that um, not feeling like it's your thing or lack of confidence, that the moment that changed was when Trish made the commitment to herself, I will get better at this. And Mm -hmm. I think there are so many areas of business that we're bad at when we first start. And if we hide from the things that we're bad at, we're or tell ourselves oh i'm just not good at that that's just not my thing it is going to consistently be stopping point after stopping point after stopping point i love that concept of i will get better at this i will learn how to do this Um, marie forleo's new book everything is figure outable like i can um uh, rachel hollis says I've learned how to do things before. I can learn how to do this again. And so that concept of allowing yourself to be the work in progress and recognize where you are, but say, I will get better at this. So for anybody in here who's feeling like maybe you're not as good at sales or not as good at speaking as you want, just go ahead and type in for us, I will get better at this. Because if you make that commitment to yourself, you absolutely will. And we're going to start going over some processes here and some things that you can do and I know Trish is a woman after my own heart because she's a detail trainer, um, not not a fluff trainer. So I love that. Um, So, but I, but you first have to decide I'm going to get better at this because otherwise, why are we here? Right? Right. Like we're not here to get better Then why are we here? So the chat is blowing up. The chat is blowing up. Everybody's committing. They're ready to get better. Okay. So That's awesome. um, when it comes to getting, let's start with getting prepared to speak, um, learning the art of speaking and learning to, you know, hone your craft of being able to deliver a message. What are some of the things that you help people to do when they're just trying to figure out what would I speak on? How would I use speaking to grow my business? Just the initial concept phase. Well, Initially, I use a formula 
when I was in college, I loved math and I still love math. Me too. Because I'm a math geek. I love it. I am. One plus one is always two. Always. And when you have a formula and you can plug and play in that formula, you can guarantee results. And that's what I have as a formula. So I have a formula that I use called the presentation profitizer formula so that really you can profitize your speaking. And it's whether or not you have, so I come from this, the space of two different things. Number one, I want to educate people, mm -hmm. right? That's really important. I want people to see what they might not see. The second thing is I want them to know that there are options for them if they have challenges and desires that are not yet fulfilled. And then I want to tell them what those options are. So that's what I want to do in my presentations always. I want to make sure that they can see what's possible for them. They can see that they don't have to have whatever it is they don't have, have now and they can have what they want. Mm -hmm. But even before the formula, Amy, it's about being able to, like we were talking about, have the confidence to be in front of people. Mm -hmm. So I have three quick tips that I always give for the confidence. So if it's okay, let's start with that. And yeah. then we'll get into and I'm the grabbing audience. my notebook because I am writing them down too. Okay, three tips. Right. Three Increase simple tips and I call them my power tips. So the first one is to power your body. Because what's happening, that whole thing that I was going through the night before and just being before I was introduced was the adrenaline in my body. Yes. That's all it was, was the adrenaline moving in my body. It's the same adrenaline that moves when you're on your way on vacation or you're going to a birthday party, right? So the idea is to move the adrenaline. And that means moving your body. So when I was feeling that feeling, rather than standing still, that's the worst thing I could do, moving around, moving my extremities, especially shaking your hands to actually get the energy through your body. So moving your body around is really an important thing. Now, so the night before, do that. In fact, I have a little gyration I do that I bring my voice into it. So literally, I'll start moving my body, and I know you can't see me all the way, but I'm lifting up my knees. And the, and the thing is, the higher you get your knees, the higher the fees you get, right? The higher the knees, the higher the fees. And I'll that. jump around and, and I'll just go, I'll just go, I'll bring my voice into it and I'll go, whoa, power, power, power. And all of that gets everything to come and move through my body. And I'll do that two or three times. <coughs> Excuse me. And I can actually feel the adrenaline slowing down, releasing. It feels really good. Now, the thing is when you're Sitting at the dais, waiting to be introduced in five minutes, you can't be jumping around. But if you do the yes, 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 power, yes, 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 if you do that, you create muscle memory. So when you're sitting in your chair and they're about to introduce you, all you have to do is make the fist that you made when you punch the air and say, yes, 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 or whatever it is that mantra was. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. I'll just punch my fist under the table and in my head go, yes. And that in and of itself reminds my body to relax. It's amazing. So power your body. If you have to sit and you're starting to feel it again, focus on your breathing and just take it in, release, take it in, release, and have see your breath actually moving that adrenaline through your body. That'll really help. So number one, power your body. Number two is power your mind. Because your mind is going to tell you all kinds of things. If you recall the work of your subconscious, it's to keep you safe. Yep. And when it keeps you safe, it keeps you small. Mm -hmm. So it's going to say things like, oh, you don't want to go out there. They don't want to hear what you have to say. You don't know this. You're not prepared. You're going to hear all this noise in your head. And the first thing is to be aware of what's being said in your head and realize it's just your subconscious being like your mom, wanting you to put your sweater on and just stay home. That's all that's happening. So all of you who are familiar with affirmations and reprogramming the subconscious mind, it's really simple. 
the first thing you want to do is you want to acknowledge the thought. Because oftentimes we'll simply say, oh no, that's not me, I don't, right? And we try to push it down. But it's like anything, if you try to push it down, what does it do? Work harder to get back up. Mm -hmm. So you, you acknowledge what you hear. What I do is I say, thanks for playing, I heard that. I really do, I say, thanks for playing, because I want to make it light. I heard that, and then I replace it with the affirmation. So if I hear it say to me, oh, you're not prepared, they're not gonna like what you have to say, I'll say, oh, I heard that, thank you so much for playing. I am so prepared, I worked all this week and I practiced, and I'm so confident and comfortable, they are going to love me, or whatever it is you wanna say in return. So the other thing about your mind is be careful what you're calling it. You're labeling how you feel, right, Amy? We, have, we both know this. Right. Right? So what are we labeling? I'm nervous. I'm scared. I'm anxious. No, you're not. You're excited. You're looking yes. forward to it. Turn it around. The same adrenaline that's making you scared is the same adrenaline that makes you excited when you're going on vacation. So make sure you're labeling it in words that are affirming rather than taking away your confidence. All right, I've, so, said that. I've said that many times to many clients that it is the exact same physical response, fear and excited. The difference, and, and I, you know, as, as you're talking, I'm like, gosh, this is, I've said this, but in different ways so many times. I've told my clients as well that, you know, that, that adrenaline is your fight or flight reflex. You're supposed right. to move. That's yeah. what it's supposed to cause you to do is to move. And so the only difference I say between um, fear and excitement is movement. That if you can just get yourself in motion, make that call, pick up the phone, get on that stage, it immediately shifts it out of fear and into something that's more positive because you're doing what the chemicals are telling you to do, which is to move. Yeah, and that's that. true in every situation. People say, oh, I'll see what happens. No, <laughs> or I don't feel like it right now. You don't feel like it. Start some movement and you'll start feeling like it. Yes, it's amazing how fast you can go from feeling completely unmotivated mm -hmm. to feeling motivated once you just get started with something. Yeah. How do I feel every night when I go on my walk and do my exercise? I never want to go. But right. five minutes in, I'm like, oh, this is great. I'm so glad I'm doing it. Exactly. Same thing. Same thing. So power your mind. Pay attention to what it's saying and make sure it's giving you things that are making you feel confident and not the opposite. So the third power tip is to power your future. And this is something that athletes are really good at and they know this. Every time an athlete is going to run a race, every time a gymnast is going to get on the high bar, she or he is going to do a visualization. They're going to see themselves accomplishing it, accomplishing it really well. They're going to feel the audience. They're going to smell the smell in the gym. They're going to see the audience stand up and give them an ovation on their feet. That's what they do. And every time they do that, your little subconscious who's trying to keep you small now has one success in that area. Your subconscious had no idea that you didn't really do it. Your mind is going, oh, you can do this. Maybe I don't have to be so nervous next time you want to. Mm -hmm. So visualization is the way you can really power your future. So when you can see the room, feel the room, smell the room, the more you can feel it, the more you'll be able to accomplish it. I so that's it. what you can do. Three things, power your mind, power your body, and power your future. Okay, so right now, I want you guys all to go on social media, and I want you to write in for this formula, because Trish just gave you a really great nugget. So go on your social media, type in power formula, number one, power your body, number two, power your mind, number three, power your future, and tag Trish so that people know she's the one who said it, because that is yes, a yes. beautiful formula. It's one that I have followed for years but has been not so clearly defined. And I, I started this morning, before I got out of bed, I was doing visualizations of what this was gonna feel like and who was gonna be involved and what, even things like, what are they going to say when the conference is done? When the summit ends, they're gonna be saying, thank you, Amy, this is exactly what I needed to power up my fourth quarter sales. I learned so much from all the trainers. Like you guys, you can say it, I've already heard it. And I know that you will say it because I visualized it this morning. 
And that that's exactly right. So incredibly powerful. So yeah, and before yeah. we got started, I was running around my living room going, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so. I love it. I love it. So we're <laughs> yeah. doing a social media shout out so that all of our friends online can be um, joining in the conference with us that, so that they can be learning some of the things that we're learning. So you are sharing the power formula number one. Power your body, number two, power your mind, number three, power your future. Tag Trish Carr, um, tag me in it as well. Let people know about the summit. And when you did that, just go in and type done and you will win brownie points. Yes, brownie and points. don't we all want those? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so when you got that done, just go in the chat and type done. Yeah. Okay, so Trish, that is a powerful formula for getting, your, um, getting yourself ready and, and feeling more confident. And this it also, I want to say, this is not just on the stage. This is when you're getting ready to pick up the phone to book yourself. This is when you're getting ready to pick up the phone to do a sales call. When I was new in sales and terrified of doing scheduling calls, I would, pl I would run around my house doing the Rocky <laughs> theme song and shaking my fist. Da 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 da. Like that's what I did. So this is the formula anytime you need to increase your confidence. So I do want to talk a little bit about how do they start getting more opportunities to speak? Where should they look? How do they reach out? Let's kind of break down that process as well. Okay, so there are many different places to speak. If, in fact, let me go to, I have a list right here because I don't want to miss a one of them. Because there are, here you go. So think about all the opportunities. So first of all, you want to find out where's my market? Where are the people that I want to speak to? For me, it's business people. It's easy, business people. Whether you're in a company, whether you own a company, it doesn't really matter. Um, I certainly have my niche of the type of companies that I work with and the type of individuals. And the more you can niche down, the better off you are. But consider, there are so many places to speak for me. So if you do any kind of conversations to offer your services to people in business, that's the easiest place to go. Now, let me remind you too, that business people are people. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be a business service that you're sharing. So I run Women's Prosperity Network, for example. We're a, a women's community, a movement of women who come together in collaboration so that we can be the best that we can be. And through our products, our projects, and our services, we make a massive difference in the world. Mm -hmm. So my audience of my community of women, we are women business owners, but we are also women who have families and lives. Right. So it's appropriate at business events to hear from people who can make a difference in my personal life as well. So whether you're a Reiki practitioner, a yoga practitioner, a business coach, a life coach, a health coach, I mean, those types of jobs, first of all, come to mind. If you work with moms to make their life easier, how many moms are in the audience at a women's group, right? Yeah. So consider, think about just in your town, how many networking groups there are that have speakers. Mm -hmm. I live in South Florida, Miami, Fort Lauderdale area. On any given day, there are over 50 networking meetings in two counties that I can go to to speak. Wow. So all you need to do is go into Google and type in networking in your city, and you'll get a huge list. <clears throat> the second place you can speak is at colleges, churches, synagogues, youth organizations. Consider things that you would think of maybe as nonprofit type things. Mm -hmm. Those areas are always looking for speakers, no matter what your area. If you're speaking on insurance, your church group wants to hear about it because they want to save money just like everybody else does. The other thing is the standards, the Rotary, the Chamber, the Kiwanis. All of them are also looking for speakers. Then there are all the multi-speaker events. So again, in my inbox right now are invitations probably to four different multi-speaker events to come to as an attendee. As soon as they hit my box, those people go on my radar. I start to create a relationship with them. So next time I'm speaking at their event. A good example of that is uh, the Women in Power Expo, which is here. They're actually expanding all over the country. And for two years, I've been creating the relationship. 
and I'm speaking on their next stage. So I'm so excited. So it's about identifying who it is and then reaching out. And it's not reaching out and saying, you know, your people really could use my message. Like when you say that to me, I just want to, okay, great. I'm sure my people could use your message, but it took me 12 years to build my business so that I could put a hundred people in the room when you want to come and speak. So how about you get to know me? You add a little value to my life before I say yes to you. So how you approach people is really important. It's got to be, the, go ahead, Amy. Some good examples too, Trish, because I, I know this to be true. You are speaking the truth right now that I get reach outs all the time for people asking for stuff from me, right? right. Not, and I don't get uh, reach outs as often for people asking, can they help support and build me? So what are some specifics? Let's give them a few specific ideas for how they would start building that relationship. Really easy. So those multi-speaker events, reach out and say, I, you know, make sure you've looked up what they do, that you really are in alignment. This is an authentic conversation. This is not, I'm trying to get a speaking gig and I'm going to say everything I have to say to get it. Sure. Because those don't work. You, you'll get the gig, but they'll know that you're not who you are. Mm -hmm. So this is an authentic conversation in really understanding that when you show up as the one for other people, uh, one of the overriding philosophies at Women's Prosperity Network is being the one for others. Instead of always looking for who can help me, right? Mm -hmm. So when you show up, what I would do and what I have done is I pick up the phone first, always start with the telephone and I'll introduce myself and I'll say, I know what, I see what you're up to. I love what you have coming up in August. What can I do to support you in making that as successful as possible? That's it. And then I shut up and I let them tell me. And then sometimes immediately it goes and I get the speaking gig. Sometimes it's I show up, I post on social media, I bring people with me, I show support for the organization. And then I've created a relationship where they are interested in working with me. Mm -hmm. So that's the biggest thing, Amy, is just being real with people and showing up to be, make the difference. Because you know it's really not about making a sale, it's about making a difference. And when you make a difference, you make the sales. And so. I just want to give a, a testimonial of this because, you know, we have um, 10 different trainers that are participating in this summit. And Trish has been the, and I don't want to, this is not a, like a knock on anybody else, but I will say Trish has gone the extra mile to be supportive of the summit. She really has. And here's what happens because of that. In my mind, I've already been like, I need to send Trish like a gift basket, like something to thank her. And, you know, I wonder, I like, I, I got an email this week from a, a, an event that I had spoken at before asking who else they should have to speak. I was like, oh, I should totally connect them with Trish. Like when you show up to serve and to help, you become front of mind. You really do. And people want to help and promote you. And when you help me, I want to support you and everything that you're doing. And so that is just a, that's a natural way that we want to do. So um, make sure that you guys are, are really taking that to heart, that if you want to be on those stages, and I know I'm guilty of this because um, here's my mental dialogue. I'm so busy, you know, like I'm so busy. I have so much going on. I can't show up to everybody's events all the time, but it doesn't always have to be you just showing up and taking people. It could be you saying, you know, I'm traveling that week, but I love that event that you have going on. Can I push that out to my email list for you? Right. Would it be helpful if, you know, we did like a Facebook live video beforehand talking about your event just to help you get more eyeballs on it. There's a lot of ways that you can do that. So I love, love, love that tip and that approach. I think it's really one of the most effective things you can do. Yeah, and what you just said is also very effective. Getting on and doing a quick Facebook Live mm -hmm. to promote someone's event, that's a great way to build rapport with people. And it's all about building rapport. The same thing with your audience. It's about building rapport. You know, you've been at, I've been at, you've been at events where it's an all day or a two day event and most of the speakers are there the whole time, but there's this one speaker who comes in 20 minutes before it's his or her turn to speak. They come on stage and they speak 
and they say a bunch of things that everybody else already said, but they never noticed because they weren't there. So they can't say, oh, as Amy earlier said, right. And then they leave and they don't build any rapport and they don't create any relationships and they wonder why they didn't close from the stage. Mm -hmm. So it, everything is about relationships, whether you want to get a speaking gig or whether you're doing a speaking gig, you're up there to create a relationship. That's what you're there for. Absolutely. And you want to create that relationship so that people resonate with what you say, so that you're speaking their language. So you were asking me earlier, you know, how do you get started? What do you talk to your audience about? First of all, all of you know your products, your services, what you sell. The what do I tell them is what you tell people all the time. That's not the necessarily challenging part. The challenging part is knowing how to put it in their language. But the most important thing is how are you gonna grab attention? How are you gonna differentiate yourself right away so you don't sound like the blah, blah, blahs that people sound like when they start their first, their talk at first? You know, that you'll get a, hello, nice to see you, so wonderful to be here. Well, let me tell you a little bit about me. I have an MBA in sales and they go on and I'm a book this and I'm a that and you're sitting there for six or seven minutes going, okay, and you're here, why? Right. So, so how you open is really important. And in the Profitizer, um, this, the presentation Profitizer is specifically created as a formula so you can plug and play. So you've been to Toastmasters or you took training mm -hmm. for speaking in school, right? So you know they always use the formula that you're, number one, you're going to tell them what you're going to tell them. Then you're going to tell them. Then, then you're you going to tell them. What you told them. <laughs> exactly. So yes and no. So the, here's the thing, in the tell them what you are gonna tell them, you wanna build rapport. Mm -hmm. You wanna open powerfully. And there's several different ways you can open powerfully. You can engage people with a great story. Now, I caution you on doing a great story until you're really good at telling stories. Mm -hmm. Not everybody is. It takes drama, it takes silence, you know how to use pauses, those kinds of things. But you can practice it and learn it. Telling a story is always a good way to get started. Now, here's the thing. My friend, Les Brown, many of you know Les. He is a huge international uh, speaker and teaches speaking. He always says that every, every point that you share has a story. So every point that you share, you want to have a story to help people remember it. And every story has a point. Yes. So you've got to make sure that your point goes to what it is you're inviting people to do. So start your story, but make sure it connects to your speech. It has to have some connection to your speech. Another way to open is with a startling statistic to grab people's attention. So for example, um, one of my clients, Margaret, she sells a weight loss supplement. And she begins her talks with a really frightening statistic. She says, in 1970, one in 10 children were overweight or obese. Today, one in three. Mm. And I'm here today to give you strategies so that your child is not the one in three. And then she goes on to do it. So that's grabs attention. Absolutely. Like, as a parent, you're going to be listening up like, Oh wait, what? I do not want my kid to be the one in three. <laughs> you know, you exactly really does have that ability to draw you in right from the get go. Exactly, and then there's the easy one that you see a lot of speakers using, and that's simply starting with an engaging question or two to get the audience to see, oh, that's what she's going to talk about. I want to hear that. So, for example, for me, it might be something like, um, raise your hand if you'd like to have an unending stream of clients in your business. And keep them raised if you want that to happen right now. And they're going, yes, yes, yes. They're screaming at that point. Yes, I want it. And they can clearly see. And then I simply say, well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to give you three strategies that when you implement them, you will have a stream of advocates, not only buying from you, but sharing everything about you with all their friends. So that's how you want to open powerfully. And then once you open powerfully, you start to build interest. And the interest is having stories and statistics and quotes by famous people that support your position. Because here's the thing, you can talk all day long 
about your area of expertise, but people don't know you. And I mean, if they know you, they, that's great. And they see you as someone who is um, an expert, but if they don't, it's important that you have other people that they know saying the same thing. So for example, one of my favorite quotes that I use is from Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is a billionaire, a multi-billionaire. I think his, his net worth, I have it over here, is worth, he's, he's worth $86 billion. And when Warren Buffett speaks, I listen. Yeah. And what he says is that the one easy way to become worth 50% or more than you are now is to hone your communication skills. 50% more than you're worth now, hone your communication skills. Well, I'm saying the same thing. So when I put that quote up, or I mentioned that quote by Buffett, it raises my credibility by association. So in your talks, you wanna use statistics that support your position and quotes that support your position. And then you'll wanna have your main points. And people do like numbers, three main points, four ways, six mm -hmm. things. It's very interesting that you can have a talk with someone. For example, we talked about the three power tips. Mm -hmm. I could have simply told those to you, but when you structure them as number one, number two, number three, people really feel as if they got real value and real step-by-steps. So make sure you number the tips. I'm going to give you four tips, five tips. Well, and the other thing about that is too, it keeps your brain engaged because I'm not going to check out because I know there's another tip coming. Exactly. Right. So even if you told me the first two things and I was like, that's good. That's exactly what I needed. I, there is something in my brain that is waiting for that third one to come. And um, it keeps my attention there. Absolutely. And each one of these main points has a story that illustrates the results that people have when they use this strategy. Mm -hmm. And hopefully this is a strategy that you have shared with a client. So you can tell a story about a client and you really want to bring it to life because remember that people buy from emotion. When I see a purse that's fantastic, I have got to have it. I am going to look fabulous with that purse. I can't wait to show it off to my girlfriends. That's emotion. And then I go, oh, and it's on sale. I go to logic to back up my emotion. So the logic is, oh, it's on sale, I'll save money, I better buy it now. It's the same thing when you are sharing, whether you're doing your conversation one-on-one -on -one with someone, or from the stage, or in writing in an email or a landing page, you want to tell stories. Because remember what they say, stories sell and facts tell because people are going to buy from emotion. So each one of your points, you want to have a story. That's really important. Story sell, facts tell. That's really a good, that's a good one. Write that down. And um, that's another good one. That's a, that's a tweetable. So share that out on social media. Make sure that you tag Trish, tag me so that we can um, get more people learning the things that we're learning. But that's a really good thing to understand. I truly believe that people no longer need you to give them information in order to make a purchase. They can find all the facts and information that they need online. They don't Correct. need you for that. What they need you for is connection and to feel good about the purchase. That's what happens through your stories and through building rapport. So they, if, you're, if your sales conversations look like fact, 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 products and features, products and features, products and features, the internet has replaced you and that's why you're not selling well, even if it used to work. They need connection, right. they need relationship, they need rapport, and they need to feel good about the decision they're making and that's gonna come through your stories. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. And let me mention, um, for those of you who really wanna take this on, I have the presentation profitizer formula. You can go and get it and I'm gonna give it to you for free. Yay. So uh, two ways. One is if you, many of you are on your computer, so you can just pull your phone out and you can enter. In fact, I think uh, we're going to get this in the chat. If you type to the phone number 727 27 727 27, it's five digit number. And you put in the word speaking, you will get the presentation profitizer formula. 
The other way you can do it is if you want to do it on your computer while you're here, just open another window and put in speaking for fun and profit.com. Speaking for fun and a n d profit.com, you'll get the profitizer formula and it'll give you the four steps to building the rapport so that you get the sale. And really, it is building rapport, using stories and testimonials, reminding them of the value when you recap, and then inviting them to their next steps. So if when you are sharing the strategies that you're going to share, the tips that you're going to share, the important thing to know is that they have got to connect in a way that it touches their hearts. So stories is the way you want to go. I have so many amazing stories with the people who I've been lucky enough to work with. My biggest, most favorite one right now is I have a client that I've been working with for about two and a half years. Her name is Debbie Montgomery Johnson. And Debbie owns a supplement company. She has a supplement that takes care of neuropathy, which is the thing that causes the leg problems for people with diabetes. Uh -huh. So she's sitting in my business of speaking program that Women's Prosperity Network does a few times a year. And in that, she wanted to grow her business. So we were talking about telling stories, how you would do it, the different statistics she could use, all these things that we're talking about here. And she said, you know what? I've got to come out of the closet. And I said, you do? What are you talking about? She goes, there's something that happened to me way beyond my business that I've been hiding for five years. And the only people that know about it are my parents. Mm -hmm. And she got up to tell her story about her husband died and um, she was lost. And, you know, people, after they lose someone, she's in her 50s, right? So she loses her husband. And six months after she loses her husband's her friends going how about getting into online dating come on time for you to start to date again so long story short she gets online she meets a man she falls in love two years later and a million dollars later finds out that she was being scammed Ooh. a million dollars she called the fbi there was nothing they would do there's nothing anybody could do she was basically that's it sorry lady you lost pps a million dollars that came out of her IRA because her husband canceled his insurance three months before he died. Mm. So she was on a mission that that would not happen to another person. And now we all hear about catfishing. Now there's actually a word for it. Well, mm. she has been, and we have been working together to hone her speaking skills. She wrote a book. She's been on local TV. She was then called by CBS this morning to be on their national show last year. And on November 7th, she's going to be on Dr. Oz. Awesome. Is that the coolest thing? So many of you out there have not just you want to move your business forward. You also have a message. Mm -hmm. You have something that you're on a mission about. And speaking to groups is the way to get it exponentially heard. Debbie is going to be heard by millions and millions of people now because she worked her way over a short period of time to being on Dr. Oz and being on the CBS Morning Show. Mm -hmm. so it's possible for all of you. It's just a matter of saying yes to yourselves like you did when you said, yes, I'm committing to this. Because your message is important. It's not just about the product, is it? It's not just about the service. You can make that difference. So instead of telling them what you're going to tell them, telling them, and then tell them what you told them, Instead, you have a four-step process. You're going to build rapport and you're going to open powerfully with a statistic or a great story or some questions that get people excited. And then you're going to tell them what it is you want them to know. And you're going to do that laden with stories that touch people's hearts, that get people thinking, that get people feeling and getting people to see that, wow, that's possible for me too. And then when you're finished with your main points, you're gonna remind them of the value that you shared with them, that you're gonna remind them of the way their life can be, that they can have their dream, whatever that is. Even if their dream is just being able to lose 10 pounds, they can have it. And then you're gonna invite them to work with you. And this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where we you often get stopped 
many of us are great sharing about our service. It's the most wonderful thing. It's the greatest thing you can ever have. Science says it's fabulous. And by the way, I want you to buy it is the hardest thing for people to say oftentimes. So it's an invitation. And the language that we use and in the business of speaking workshop that we do, we give you this formula, you get to practice it. And the language is feminine, not, not masculine. It's not, okay, get up on the stage with me. And that whole heavy duty, you all know it. It doesn't feel good to me. It's an invitation for you to step into the next level of your life, mm -hmm. to actually have what you say you want and to know that you're not doing it alone. I've just talked with you for an hour and now you feel as if you know me and can trust me. That's the whole point of me talking with you for an hour so that you can then say yes to yourself. So for you, it's building rapport, stories and testimonials, reminding them of value and inviting them to next steps. That's the four things. And I all of that's Okay, so who has gotten it already? Did you text in? So texting 72727, text the word speaking, or you can go to speakingforfunandprofit.com. Okay, Diane already has it. Um, Pat's got oh, cool. it. Who else has got it, you guys? Let's, let's hear from you. And uh, I am going to text in right now, actually. I was taking notes, and I haven't done it yet, but I want it. So we are yeah, going to do it. Okay. And I'm going to put it in the, uh, I'm going to put it in the, I'm going off screen because my, but I'm going to put it in the uh, chat in the Zoom as well. Yep. That sounds awesome. Okay. Speaking for fun and profit .com. Make sure you text in and get that. Okay, Trish, we've got a couple minutes here left and I want to just do some quick, quick questions. Blue by Amy is blue by. I know, isn't it crazy? Time flies when you're having fun. Okay, so quick questions. What is one book you think every entrepreneur should read? Oh, that's a really good question. I have to be honest with you and tell you it's a really, really old book and it's the first one that always comes to mind. And that's The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. Seven Habits. Uh, Seven Habits. And my second book is also an older book, and it's called The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. The E-Myth is one of mine that I'm like, every, it should be, before you can get a business like EIN, you should have, you have to, to read, read it. <laughs> yeah. Michael Gerber is brilliant at showing you how there's this beautiful illusion of what life is going to be like when you open your own bakery shop. And the reality is that it's a little more than you expected so that you know going in what's expected. Instead of being in it for a year, treading water, wondering why people aren't paying me, you'll see in the book. So it's a great, right. those, are, those are two of my favorites. Thanks. Right. I love it. Okay. I knew, my newest now is, is Collins is Good to Great. Oh, I love, I love all things Jim Collins. Built to yeah. love, good to great. Um, yeah, good to great. Phenomenal. And good to great. The reason I love good to great is because the number one reason companies and people don't become great is because they're very happy being good. Uh huh. Very and that's good. yeah. And we don't realize that we stay complacent when we everything's good. Mm hmm. Same, but there's no growth. Absolutely. Okay. So next question: What do you want people to remember out of our conversation that we've had? If there's one thing they remember, what would it be? If there's one thing that they remember, I want them to remember that people buy on emotion and that stories of real people that are relatable are what will sell more than anything else. They will overcome your objections. They will help you with your recommendation. They will help you not have any objections, mm -hmm. but stories about especially people you've worked with and the trauma they were dealing with before you worked with them and the value that they got after. And it's results they got. Not that they liked working with you, not that you were fun, none of that. What results did they get? That's the number one thing I want you to remember. Awesome. Okay, we had a question come in. Would you repeat the books? So the books were The E-Myth by Michael Gerber, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey, um, and then by Jim Collins, Good to Great, 
And I'm going to add on there, built to last is really good as well. So good resources for you. Okay, so next question. Um, what do you want people to feel? What's the emotion you hope that they walk away with based on what you shared today? What I want you to walk away with is inspiration. I want you to know that your message is important and people want to hear it. Not that they need to hear it, but we want to hear it. I want you to be inspired to step out and step up and speak to groups because when you speak to groups, it brings you credibility, it brings you expertise, it you maximize your time. I'm speaking to hundreds of people now. Why would I wanna to speak to one person for an hour when I could speak to hundreds for an hour? The other thing it does is it leverages you and raises you above the crowd. People have to know you before they need you. Got it? I have to know you before I need you and I have to remember you when I need you. And one of the easiest ways for you to build that kind of rapport is by speaking, whether it's to groups or Facebook Lives or Instagram TV, but putting yourself out there. So I want you to know that you can do this. And it's simply, simply, simply just deciding and then learning it from people who know what they're doing. You cannot learn how to speak by reading about it writing about it or anything else. It's, you can't watch ESPN and learn how to ride a NASCAR. You can't drive a NASCAR. You've got to actually do it and do it with people who are looking over your shoulder to say, yes, that's right, shift over here. That's what has got to be done. So I want to inspire you to do that. That's the number one thing. Awesome. Okay, that is another uh, tweetable that we need to share out. People have to know you before they need you and remember you when they need you. Guys, I want you to go and post that on social media. So pull out your Facebook, pull out your Instagram, pull out your Twitter, whatever platform you like to play on. People need to know you before they need they you need and you. they need to remember you when they need when you. They That's need so you. important and just, I mean, it's just tweetable. It just sounds good. It is. So well, here's the out. other one. Here's the other one. People, you always hear people say, well, it's who you know. No, it's not who you know. It has nothing to do with who you know. It's who knows you, yes. period. Who knows you? And when you stand on stages, people know you. That's all there is to it. I love That's it. That's all there is to it. Okay, so last question. What do you want, this, and this one is a big one for me. I feel like a lot of people get a lot of information and don't implement. So we talked about what do you want them to remember? What do you want them to feel? Now, what should they do? What is one action that you would, if they were all to come back and say, hey, Trish, I did it, that you would be jumping up and down saying, yes, 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 this was amazing. What do you want them to do? What's the action? Okay, so besides going and getting the presentation profitizer formula, which is going to give you the foundation for what I'm going to suggest, I really want you to jump out and go ahead now and think about where's a place I can speak? Somebody I know who would say yes. Maybe it's my networking meeting. Maybe it's at Women's Prosperity Network and I'm a member and I get to do five minutes in front of the group. That's something we do but I want you to create a speaking opportunity. And as soon as you create it, even if it's for January, you're gonna start living into it and you're gonna start working on it and you're gonna start making it happen. Get yourself an easy way to speak to groups, even if it's just you pulling together five people. I love it. Okay, so who's in? Who's taking? Who's in? Let's see. You're in, post in the chat box and tell us, I'm Let's doing it because chat. I want to see yeah, I feel like I need to get my glasses on for this one too. Okay, who, everybody right now, who is in that you are going to go out and find a place to speak? Um, Anne Heisinger is in, Sonia's in, Dee is in, Pat is in, Yanessia is in, Natasha is in, um, Denise is in and doing it every month. I love that. It's not just a one-time deal, but she's going to make this a regular part of her business. Awesome. 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 And when, and when you do this, this becomes an, a stream of income. This is also not just filling your funnel with new leads, 
you can make offers from the stage. You know, for, if you go to a networking meeting and there's 30 people there and you offer something for $50, you walk away with 150 bucks if you only close 10%. Mm -hmm. If you close 30%, which is the goal, you're looking at a lot more money. Do it every month. You can bring in $1,500, $1,800 a month into your business simply by going to small networking meetings and making small offers. And then those people will move to your next level because small commitments lead to big commitments. That is so true. Gosh, you have so many good quotes. You need to write a book of Trish Carr quotes. <laughs> I do. I was, I actually, is this a good idea? I like that. That's a like a little, a little book. You know how they make those little small pockets? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm like working on that now. Trish Carr sales quotes. You have I love it. You're very quotable. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Amy. It's been such a pleasure to be here. Thank you all for your attention, for being with us for this hour. Stay on the summit because for the rest of the day, you're going to be hearing from multiple people. And the, the cool thing about having additional hearing from other people is sometimes you'll hear something in a different way and it'll spark and it'll give you an idea that you just didn't have before. So stay with us today and be Absolutely. sure you're a part of this great summit. Amy, thank you thank for putting you this together. Thank so you for being on and for just being a cheerleader for the summit and helping with promotion and um, sharing your, your strategies, your experience, your wisdom with us. We're so grateful to have you. We are going to make a shift right now of trainers. So Trish is saying goodbye. So everybody, Thank Trish Hi, and thank her for her time, for her experience. Um, you know, it's not an hour that she gave. I want you to understand that. It's her 30 year career that she just gave. So she has been preparing for this moment for 30 years, building her, her skills and her experience to be able to share with you. So make sure you give her a big thank you.